Hi, I'm Ilaria Magniluca from the National Institute of Optics of the National Council of the Research of Italy, and I'm presenting a talk on overcoming qubit-based QKD with efficient high-dimensional encoding. And I am Beatrice Dalio. I'm a PhD student at the Technical University of Denmark, and I'm presenting a second talk about towards high-dimensional QKD over a two-kilometer-long multicore fiber. Okay, so we will start with uh, introducing the high dimensional quantum states uh, and their benefits in quantum communication. And then we will present uh, uh, a new scheme for a four dimensional QKD with time beam encoding that we have tested uh, with a uh, uh, simplified fiber based setup uh, together with a two dimensional protocol. And then we will report a demonstration of a transmission of path encoded qubits over a multicore fiber of two kilometers of length by using um, active phase stabilization and real time phase modulation. So let's start with introducing the high dimensional quantum states. We all know that a qubit is the quantum state associated with a single bit of classical information, as it can be represented um, with uh, any physical system with uh, two different levels. More generally, a qubit is the quantum state belonging to a D-dimensional Hilbert space, and thus it corresponds to a system with uh, D levels. Um, so in order to prepare an I-dimensional state, we have to enlarge the set of degrees of freedom of our system. And this uh, makes possible to carry more than one bit of information and thus to increase the information capacity of the system. So um, by using high dimensional encoding in quantum key distribution, is it possible to optimize the photon budget at the transmitter as each single photon is prepared to carry more than one bit of information of the secret key of, of the secret bits. So um, uh, the increase the information capacity also mitigates the issue of saturation of the single photon detectors at the receiver. That is the typical limitation of the secret key uh, rate achievable at, uh, at short distances. And in addition, high dimensional QKD um, is more robust to the noise affecting the communication. As for the same quantum bit error rate, it is possible to generate more secret key bits with an high dimensional protocol than with a two dimensional one. So when dealing with uh, single mode fibers, uh, time beam encoding is a convenient choice for high dimensional QKD. In the conventional uh, four-dimensional protocol with time, with time beam encoding, the two bits of information are encoded in the Z basis by using the time of, ar of arrival of the photon. That requires only a detector to be measured at the receiver. But on the, one, on the other hand, the X basis is quite complicated since all of the four time beams have to, be, have to be combined with different phases. And as a consequence, uh, uh, a complex setup with a cascade of, of three interferometers and four detectors uh, is, ne is necessary at the receiver. So in our work, uh, we decided to test this alternative four-dimensional basis uh, that are depicted here. And as you can see, uh, each state in both bases uh, is, the is the superposition of only two time beams. Uh, and thus, uh, a single interferometer with delay one is uh, sufficient to project on the Z basis, uh, while another interferometer with delay two is, su is sufficient to project uh, on the X basis. In addition to this, uh, um, by adding an active basis choice at the receiver, this configuration makes possible to uh, notably simplify the experimental setup and to reduce the amount of detectors that are required in the QKD system. 
So as you can see here, uh, in our experimental setup, uh, we decided uh, to overlap the two interferometers at the receiver side in a way that uh, the short arm is in common while the long arm is uh, selected between these two different paths uh, depending on the polarization of the incoming light. Thus, in this configuration, the receiver chooses its basis uh, actively um, by rotating the polarization of the incoming photons. And the result, as you can see, is a very compact uh, and practical uh, setup where the amount of expensive resources, uh, such as the single photon detector, is uh, reduced. To be noted that in our experiment, uh, um, the active basis choice was performed manually by using this uh, polarization controller here. Uh, but this device uh, can be replaced uh, with uh, a polarization switcher in order to make the acquisition fully automatic. In the same work, we also tested uh, a two-dimensional time beam protocol, that is the uh, BB84 with uh, three states. And to test this protocol, uh, we employed the same ex experimental setup uh, of the four-dimensional scheme which means that uh, the state preparation rate at the transmitter was twice faster in the two-dimensional case, since here we have uh, only two time beams instead of four. And um, we employed also one of the two interferometers to uh, project uh, on the two-dimensional X basis. And to be noted that uh, both uh, of the two schemes uh, requires only two single photon detector to measure all states in both bases. So by comparing the two uh, QKD protocols, we found more similar error rates in the, in the four dimensional bases. That is because the measurement method of, of the two bases is more similar in, the, in this case. And then we evaluated the secret key rate achievable uh, by using a, a one decoy method and a finite key analysis. And we found an enhancement of the secret key rate by more than a factor two for the first two experimental points, while for higher channel losses, the two-dimensional appears to be more convenient since uh, um, the, um, the random dark counts uh, of the detectors uh, are more damaging in the four-dimensional case. But uh, if we consider the um, secret key bits that we can generate from each uh, quantum state, uh, we find that uh, uh, we find an announcement for all of the experimental points which means that uh, if we prepare the four-dimensional state at the same rate as uh, for the two-dimensional case, we can increase the secret key rate at least until uh, um, 145 kilometers of fiber distance. So in conclusion, we, um, we have presented uh, an alternative scheme for uh, four-dimensional QKD with single-mode fibers, showing that uh, 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 and a more efficient time beam encoding together with an active basis choice um, can simplify the experimental setup. And then we employed the same experimental setup to test also a two-dimensional protocol, finding an enhancement of the secret key rate by more than a factor two uh, below 14 dB of channel loss, and then an, an enhancement of the secret BD key bits for all the experimental points. Okay. Okay, mm -hmm. so let's move to the second um, experimental work that we present in this uh, presentation. And so uh, um, 
In this work, we have used high dimensional path encoded states. And this um, degree of freedom is uh, very promising because it's used for um, implementation on photonics integrated circuits. Um, so uh, the way um, this degree of freedom works is shown here. So for example, this is a four dimensional um, QDIT uh, where we have uh, four possible paths and hence the states in the computational basis are encoded as pulses that um, propagates only on one of these paths. Um, so we said it is a promising degree of freedom uh, when it's used on chips. But what if we want to transmit uh, this kind of states, for example, from one chip to another? One way to do that is to use uh, single mode fibers and to couple every path to different single mode fibers, which are fibers with just one core and that propagates only one mode and they are shown here on the left. Um, another way, a uh, possible way to transport these states is to couple every path to different cores of a multicore fiber. And an example of multicore fiber is shown here on the right and this is a seven core multicore fiber. However, we need to remember that we also, we do not only have states belonging to the computational basis, but we also have superposition states where we have to maintain the phase relation between the pulses propagating on different paths along the whole transmission. Uh, however, if we use single mode fiber, we know that um, the states propagating on this kind of fibers are affected by independent phase drift. And this is shown here in this figure with the purple uh, lines. So this uh, plot was obtained by measuring the output power of a two kilometer long interferometer where the, both arms are two different single mode fibers. And as you can see in the zoom here of the first second, um, the two outputs are of course correlated. When one is the maximum, the other is at its minimum, but they are drifting very fast. So the uh, phase drift rate is on sub, sub second time scale. Uh, however, if we repeat the same kind of experiment by using two different cores of the same multicore fiber uh, as the arm of the interferometer, then we obtain something uh, like this, which is shown in orange and red, where as you can see, uh, we still have phase drift, but uh, they are much slower. So the time scale now is on the order of the second. Um, this shows us that it's probably more easy to uh, transmit these kind of states using different cores of a multicore fiber. However, we still have drift, and so which means that to have a faithful transmission of these states, we need to stabilize uh, the propagation channel. A way to do this is to use a phase lock loop board, which works as is shown here. So let's imagine that we have a fiber-based interferometer and we inject some light and then we measure the two uh, outputs and we use one as a reference signal for the phase lock loop board. Uh, this uh, board is using this signal as a reference to track the phase drifts that are happening inside the interferometer. Based on this reference signal, then the board is outputting another kind of signal that is used to compensate this phase drift because it's used to act on a phase actuator that is inside the optical path in the interferometer. Uh, if we then want to test this kind of stabilization setup, uh, we would like to do that by using states belonging that can be used for our quantum key distribution protocol. So uh, for this scope, we want to uh, transmit qubits. So for example, our four dimensional uh, states. And we, um, so we use, uh, we design two mutually unbiased bases. And instead of using the computational basis and the superposition states on all the four paths, 
we design, let's say we, we do this mark basis choice where we always have states that are superposition of two paths. And this allows us to uh, um, require basically stabilization only on two, between two cores for all the states that we send. So if we want to have a complete system, we need two signals, one that encodes these kind uh, quantum states. So for example, on one wavelength, and another signal on another wavelength that is used as a reference signal to, for the stabilization. If we, do, if we prepare one state at a time, uh, shown here, and we measure, we project on all the possible states of the same basis, we can measure the fidelity, which is shown here. And uh, we see that we always have more than 97%. Uh, which means that our stabilization si system can um, uh, effectively track and compensate for the phase drift during the transmission. Uh, however, up to, um, to now, we only transmitted one state at a time. So if we want to go uh, move more toward a complete real-time system, we need active state choice. Um, to choose between the state, we need to be able to choose between pairs of cores. And to do that, we can use an optical switch. But we also need to uh, uh, phase modulate the phase difference between the two cores. Uh, and usually, uh, this can be done by using a phase modulator. However, we now have two signals that are co-propagating on the same optical path. And they have to co-propagate on the same path to be able to stabilize the interference. Uh, so if we uh, use this phase modulator to modulate the quantum signal, we will end up uh, modulating also the stabilization signal. And this is a problem which is shown here on this upper graph. Uh, when the, the stabilization signal is phase modulated because of a bandwidth mismatch between the repetition rate of which we modulate and the bandwidth of receiver and the board, then we can't see anymore basically the uh, interference fringes. Uh, as soon as we turn off the phase modulator, however, we see the interference fringes again. So uh, one way to go around this problem is to exploit the polarization dependence of uh, phase modulators. And uh, because phase modulators effectively modulate only the polarization that is aligned with a certain axis of the crystal. Uh, so we design um, a loop that help us uh, keep the two signal orthogonal and in a way that we can, that we have the correct polarization for the quantum signal that then is uh, phase modulated and the orthogonal polarization for the stabilization signal, which then is not modulated. And in fact, in such a way, we see that um, our interference fringes are uh, present even when the phase modulator is on and the stabilization signal is, going, uh, is passing through it. So if we uh, insert this kind of phase modulation loop inside our um, uh, setup, then the setup looks something like this where we have uh, the two uh, laser that outputs the two, uh, the stabilization and the quantum channel. And with this kind of setup, what we can do is we can choose between the states of one basis. Uh, so if we use this setup and we measure the quantum meter rate in real time, uh, we show here the long-term uh, basically stability that we, that we are measuring. And uh, this shows that our stabilization si system is um, effectively working and it's not affecting the uh, phase modulation of uh, our states. And as you can see, the, the quantum meter rate measure is quite flat, uh, apart from these spikes. And this represents moments where the phase, uh, phase lock loop board uh, lost the locking position. But as you can see, it, re is, it, it can fastly recover the same value that it had before. Um, the average is of a quantum meter rate is around uh, 5%, but actually only 2.8 of this error is due to the, 
to the to phase errors, which is in agreement with what we measured uh, the fidelity we measured uh, before when we were only sending one state. The the other error is due to the to the switch modulation basically. Uh, so if we use this system to extrapolate uh, a secret key rate, of course, we need to measure the quantum meter rate in all the possible configurations for the both phases. Then we can extrapolate the secret key rate, which is uh, very high, is around 6.3 megabit per second, uh, which means that our system uh, is now in can now uh, produce the same amount or it's in the same range of a uh, more conventional system using uh, for example time mean encoding with single mode fibers um, we also emulated a loss a channel with higher losses by adding a loss at the end of the propagation of the fiber um, and these uh, points are shown here and also we extrapolated the key, the key rate. Uh, however, this is not uh, exactly what would happen if we had a longer multi-core fiber. And this is because um, probably longer fiber have faster phase drift. So it would be very interesting to be able to uh, look and investigate um, for uh, how much uh, long a channel our system can effectively, effectively stabilize. Uh, to conclude, uh, so we've shown that uh, path encoded qubits are um, a promising degree of freedom and they can be transmitted using uh, different cores of a multi-core fiber. Uh, we still have some phase drift that we need to stabilize to have uh, high fidelity transmission. And um, we need also, if we want to implement a complete QKD protocol in real time, we need to uh, in we need to be able to stabilize, but at the same time modulate the quantum state. And we have shown uh, a way um, when uh, that is one way in which it's possible to do this by using the polarization dependence of phase modulators. Finally, we have shown that if we use this kind of system for quantum key distribution protocol, we have long-term stability, a low quantum meter rate, and high secret key rate that can be generated. So we want to thank you for your attention. Thank uh, also to all the sponsors that made these experiments possible and to all the people that participated in this.